Let the church say amen. Amen. Brother Chuck, we thank you. Let the church say amen again. Let's give God a hand praise for Brother Chuck Abernethy, who has uh, blessed us, blessed us this Sunday, and we thank you, and we honor you, and uh, we are grateful for you, my brother. Thank you so much. I would remind the singers in the congregation, along with these seated up front, this Wednesday night, your choir leader is Elder Teresa Red. She's looking forward to being with you, and she's looking forward to leading you for uh, our 9 a.m. service for Thanksgiving Sunday, early Thanksgiving Sunday, next Sunday. Let the church say amen. Let us bow our heads for prayer. My God, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If you withdraw your hand from me, I don't know where I'd go and now in the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, the hearts of all those gathered here, may it all be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemers, we together consider the message, finish before it gets stale. Finish before it gets stale, for we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. And the church said, amen. You are familiar with the generosity of our master, Jesus Christ, rich as he was, he gave it all away for us. In one stroke, he became poor and we became rich. So here's what I think. The best thing you can do right now is finish what you started last year and not let those good intentions grow stale. Somebody say, I know what stale is. <laughs> 
Your heart's been in the right place all along, the encouragement continues. You've got what it takes to finish it up, so go to it. Once the commitment is clear, you do what you can, not what you can't. The heart regulates the hands. <laughs> Give somebody a high five and say, do your best, neighbor. Do your best, neighbor. Thank you so much. Mother Teresa once gave an interview to a magazine called Hello. She was asked this question for the interview. Is it only the affluent who give? She replied, no. Even the poorest of the poor give. The other day, a very poor beggar came up to me and said, everyone gives to you, and I also want to give you 20 paisa, which is about two pence, which is about two pennies. <laughs> I, 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 I thought to myself, what do I do? If I take it, he won't have anything to eat, but if I don't take it, I would hurt him so much. So I took, and he was so happy because he had given to Mother Teresa of Calcutta to help the poor. Giving cleans the heart and helps you get closer to God. You get so much back in return. Generosity is not just a nice character trait people have, beloved. Oh no, it, it is right at the heart of what our faith is all about. Uh, theologian and scholar C.S. Lewis defined Christianity at one time as a kind of giving. Our faith, Christianity. God has poured out, you see, his generosity to us in Jesus, and we are called to respond in faith and in generosity to others. The key to blessing is generosity. We've said it before. We said it in this campaign. The righteous give generously. That's Psalm 37 and 21. Remember what Martin Luther said. Martin Luther, the great founder of, of everything that is Protestant and not Catholic within Christianity. The one, the forebearer before us all. He said a religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, and suffers nothing is worth nothing. He went on to say at another time in his ministry, there are three conversions necessary for the Christian. The first is the conversion of the heart. The second is the conversion of the mind. And then the third is the conversion of the purse or the wallet. <laughs> of these three, it may well be that we moderns find the conversion of the purse or the wallet the most difficult. Hmm. What do we learn from the congregation at Corinth this morning besides Paul trying to inspire Corinth with the little church over in Macedonia? We learn about generosity from this passage. And before generosity can take place, we learn about willingness. Everybody say willingness. A willingness of our heart to provide for the work of the Lord. You see, we grow our Christian faith day by day. Doesn't happen any other way. We realize that it sometimes takes years upon years upon years before the Christian understands fully the willingness and the joy of giving. Years. Martin Luther said that the last thing to be converted in the Christian is what do you remember? I just said it. It's the purse and the wallet. <laughs> That's the last thing, and I think he could be right. Our sinful nature always drags us back in, y'all, saying we need more for ourselves. How do we overcome this idea of selfishness rather than selflessness? We always need more for ourselves. I paused as I reach this point this week in the sermon because I wanted to try and illustrate it. And all I could think of, Chuck, was that marvelous scene 
from God Father 3. That scene where Michael Corleone, y'all, Michael Corleone, who had told his wife, Kay, he said, Kay, I, I, I'm going to get this family into legitimate business, and, and I'm going to do it before I die. Michael Corleone, who was not the chosen one to become the next godfather, his brother Sonny was. He wasn't the chosen one. Michael was the one that was supposed to be smart in the family, and Become the president of the United States. Does that sound like the Kennedys to somebody? <laughs> Michael Corleone, who before the diabetic coma that he went into was stressed by a nephew, a young nephew with a hot head, come on somebody, who wanted to solve everything with violence in a continuing way, who was satisfied with the whole family being gangsters and staying gangsters from now till kingdom come. Michael Corleone, who, who with that stress on him said, you know, he, 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 looked, he said, just when I thought I was, I was out of all of this criminal stuff, just when I thought I was out of all this illegitimate stuff, just when I thought I was out of all this ugly stuff, they pulled me back in. <laughs> then he gets sick. And they kill the people they wanted to kill anyway. Amen. Send his sister in on recognizance afterwards. The psalm writer says this, beloved. I want you to get it in your spirit today. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. He says, the psalmist does in 51 and 12, that we need to pray. Somebody say pray. We examine our options saying, Lord, Give me a willing spirit. Somebody say willing again. Give me a joyful spirit in giving, providing for the work of God's kingdom. First, we learn willingness. Then we learn generosity. Oh, willingness comes first, y'all. This morning, consider the willing generosity of this elderly man who won the lottery. An elderly man won $1 million in a lottery. He was worried about, uh, his, his family was worried about him because he had a bad heart. They were afraid that when they told him he'd won the $1 million, he might drop dead of shock. So they went to their minister, hoping that the minister would find the best way to break the news to the gentleman. The minister called on his old friend and they talked for a while as old friends often do, Vernon, until finally the minister said, what would you do if I told you you won $1 million in the lottery? The man said immediately, why? I give half to the church. And at that point, not the man, but the minister dropped dead. <laughs> oh, yes. Verse 9 of our passage this morning, beloved, turns to the supreme example and the real motivation for improving our giving in the church of Jesus Christ. For you, for you all know, you know, you are familiar with the generosity of our master, Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he gave it away all for us. In one stroke, he became poor and we became rich. The supreme argument for gratefully giving is introduced with you all know. You know this stuff. Do you know that there are churches that don't even have stewardship campaign year in and year out? Can y'all imagine that? Finance folk, come on, somebody. They skip it because they feel it's hard to ask for money. <laughs> Says you know this. You know what Jesus gave. For God so loved the world that he what gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but inherit eternal life. You know he became poor. They say he had a borrowed manger and a borrowed grave. Jesus, he became poor. 
See, the, the greatest empowering of Christian giving is the giving grace given to us, seen by us in our own Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of Christian giving is supremely seen in him. Christ's love bypasses our unworthiness, bypasses our sinfulness, is unprovoked at our rebellion and stops short of nothing, but gives itself in complete surrender. God's love is for us for all time. We can't cuss our way out of God's love. We can't drink our way out of God's love. We can't smoke our way out of God's love. God will still love you. And you're just going to have to deal. Amen? And clean up your act because you love God back. This God that we serve showed us that in the fullness of time, Jesus was willing willing from beginning to end, willing to give more than even our dearest and closest best friend would give. Jesus was willing, willing to suffer and bleed, willing to die so we could receive the salvation we know and share for eternity. Jesus who gave us the salvation that we know so that we could have over in glory. Sister Lydia, welcome seat. A uh, new robe, some new shoes. Story is told of a man who was with St. Peter at, at the gate of heaven. The man was, uh, was excited because he had made it there and not anywhere else. Come on, somebody. And St. Peter looked at him and he looked at St. Peter and he said, look at all those mansions over there. All the nice lawns and all the big square feet of houses. I never could have imagined that it would be like that. Now, St. Peter, what's my address? Which one of those mansions do I go to? And St. Peter looked at him and he said, the homes up here go for what you put in. And by what you gave, we got a little hut over there on the end that you ain't seen yet. <laughs> so I close today with these three questions. You know Jesus was willing. Are you willing? See, you've heard it in the word today. Are you willing? to finish fulfilling your pledge from this year. See, before we can get to the business of next year, thank you to all of you. Give God a hand praise for all of you who already have committed to next year. Thank you so much for the pledge cards that I just saw in, in, the, in the offering plate for next year, amen? But, but guess what? November's got to go through and there'll be bills in November, won't there, Gary? Come on, somebody. There'll finally be heating bills that rise in December because it ain't going to be summertime for much longer. Y'all know we're going to pay for this. Somebody knows we're going to pay. Amen. Well, we're going to get whacked sometime. <laughs> Are you willing to finish your pledge for this year? Strong. That's the encouragement. Finish strong. Amen. Finish strong. And we know that <laughs> when we think of stuff that gets stale, my mama was the one at my house who reminded us all that we needed to finish the bread before it got stale. Amen. Everybody ate toast at my house. Amen. A loaf of bread went a long way. Loaf of bread could be for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Come on, somebody. Mom, I'm hungry. Son, go make you a sandwich. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever heard it? Eat that bread before it gets stale. And every now and then, when the inside was stale, there were still those, those heels. You know anything about the heels of the bread, Brother Bernie? Come on. <laughs> and sometimes even the heels were stale. Amen? 
She said, eat that bread, eat that loaf, eat it before it gets stale. Finish it before it gets stale. Anybody been there? Thank you, Lord, for the people in our lives that remind us that these love relationships that we treasure in our lives, they too can get stale sometimes. And they remind us, finish what you started when you started romancing that love of your life. Finish it. Because you need to make sure that love knows that they're love. Amen. Finish it before your love gets stale. Finish it with big things, but finish it with little things. Oh, you know the ones that run out in the middle of the night to get the cherries for the Cool Whip on the strawberry shortcake just to make it just right. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that love can get stale. Are you willing? Are you willing, secondly, to make your fresh commitment to 2017? Those of you who haven't made it yet. Those of you who have, thank you. We appreciate you. The third question and the final question today for you to take home and to ponder, consider, and pray over is this. Are you willing? Willing to show your joy, your love of the Lord, and your love of the United Church of Mount Bello. I, I think that's the biggest lesson I've learned from serving this Habitat for Humanity board. People of, of many ages showing how much they love it. We're going to give you a hammer and make you hammer all day long in the hot sun. Yet they love it. People who receive the homes and the joy that they have when they occupy that new home and it's theirs. They don't have to rent anymore. They show their joy. Oh, you all, we, we, we show our joy very well within these walls. Give God a hand praise for how you show your joy in these walls. Can you show your joy when you leave? What's your church? United Church of Marbello. Get over here. Show your joy to somebody. Show your love of your church in your gifts of your time and your talent and your treasure. Finish. Finish what you need to do for the Lord before this life gets stale and God calls us home. Finish. Let God be able to say you finished something. That you weren't always the one saying and praying and planning. Don't you know that's what broke out this week? People have been praying for generations. I never seen the Chicago Cubs win a World Series in 52 years on earth. They never done it in 108 years. Why? Because some of you will appreciate a man came to the ballpark with his billy goat and his billy goat was his. And the man with the billy goat decided that his seat down front was a seat for him, but the seat next to him was for his billy goat. And the billy goat smelled like a billy goat. Somebody say, I know they must not smell that good. Come on, somebody. And because of how the billy goat smelled and how the billy goat was into acting and, and if the billy goat was going to be a billy goat in the stadium and start kicking at one point or, 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 or whatever billy goats do, they got horns too. Come on, somebody. The usher told him, take that billy goat out of here. You get out of here. Yeah, I curse you. I curse you. I shouldn't even blame but the curse was broken. The Chicago Cubs had 8 million people. I don't know how many million. It got so crazy watching it online right here in the office. People were climbing the light poles so they could see the players in Chicago. Climbing the light poles. Come on, somebody. I know I ain't never been as excited 
since the Bulls won. Amen. <laughs> With Michael Jordan on the team. Amen. <laughs> it's just been an exciting week that way. But people need to see your passion is with your church too. Amen. They need to see you speak positively of what goes on around here too. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll grow it like you want to grow it. It'll be like you want to see it become. For together, God will bless and anoint a new season in all our lives. If we can finish before our commitment gets stale. Don't let it get stale on you now. Mama would tell me, boy, stale ain't going to kill you. Put them heels in a sandwich. <laughs> Grill them up in a grilled cheese. <laughs> Have mercy. God bless you. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you today for who you are and we thank you that we're yours. We thank you for the miracle of existence and living. We thank you, oh God, because you never forget us and because you love us no matter what. But oh God, even in the midst of this, we are obligated to serve you and to serve you right and to serve you well. Help us to give back unto the kingdom in a way, oh God, that is proper and fitting and right. To give of what we have, not of what we don't have, but to give it. Whether we're here or we're not here, to give it month in and month out, to give it regularly and routinely, to give it, oh God, in a way that fulfills our promises and doesn't shirk on you. Oh God, we, we thank you for these, your people. Each one beautiful, each one handsome, each one, oh God, beloved in your sight. Thank you, oh God, for your people. Bless them as they go forth from this place. I ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. And we all said amen. Amen and amen. Come on, let's take out our insert in our bulletin. And turn over to the back side, the side that says the order for Thanksgiving and Holy Communion. And I call on our elders who are helping at the table today. Elder Hanson, Elder Crawford, Elder Garner. As you come forth today, amen. Amen and amen.